principality. So what I'm trying to tell you, some of this language, Satan originally as a principality, as a morning star, there you have it, a morning star, a starry host made by the breath of God. The elements, these are, these are the most highest orders of created beings, the progenitors, the firstborns. Okay, he was right up there. He was in the garden. He was in Eden. He had a seal of perfection. He was full of beauty. These are other. We know. So these are all where he was in his pre-fallen state. God placed him. He was on the holy mountain. He had access. He had access to the holy to the throne room of God. Okay, but in what I just want to say really quick, this when you are unpacking. The kings of Tyre, the king of Assyria, the king of Egypt, and the king of Babylon. Now, I'm not going to do that this time, but I will tell you. This is Satan possessing, housing, okay, because the body is just the container. You put into it a soul, okay? This is, and this is a lot of the mystery school, what, what would they do? <laughs> this is how Satan has just been with us all this time. He is able to incarnate himself into human containers all down the, that's, that's, so the final antichrist the final one is just another incarnation of satan in some kind of in some vessel okay and this is going to be it but that's how you understand this how this principality this archangel this fallen cherub could all could be referred to all this typology parabolically in the king of tyre the king of Assyria. those are just the vessels Okay, who will, and this is the same principle as, this is deep stuff, people. I hope you're tracking with me. I know there's some people out there that really can, and I praise the Lord for you. I praise the Lord for people whose hunger and thirst after righteousness and truth. But this is how Satan, as a 12-winged angel, I was explaining this last week, was possessed inside a nakash, which is a six-winged race of created order of his angelic host. So there again, something more powerful, the soul, because believe me, your soul is way more powerful <laughs> than your body. This is the whole point. Oh, my gosh. And your soul will live forever. It was originally t designed to live forever and will live forever, along with the body. We'll, we'll be given elements in the resurrection rapture where we will, again, live forever. But So that's how you understand that. Okay, so let's keep going back to Ezekiel. Because some, some of the best information is in, is in Ezekiel. So I was talking about son of man, take up this lamentation against the king of Tyre. Okay, sometimes you were going to into the king of Egypt, some of the king of Assyria, the king of Babylon. These are all Antichrist figures. These are all people who have totally let themselves be used by Hasatan. Behold, in Ezekiel 31.3, it says, Behold, Assyria was a cedar in Lebanon with beautiful branches and forest shade and, every, and very high, and its top was among the clouds. Clouds, another reference. See, this is where this language is also not only talking about the being, but, but part of its mechanisms, its attributes. You know, that this is where you get into the elements in the, 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 the gemstones. These are all parabolic language that talk about the high level but I can't get into this but I what you have to see all right so he was a cedar in Lebanon now Lebanon I have to tell you this and it's parabolic understanding there's two things you have to understand about Lebanon Lebanon is a code word for the um, the garden of God okay you have two things you have a garden of Eden Eden was on the earth and then you have the garden of God or paradise, okay? Now, one is referring to the soul, okay? So there's two states. You have two computer programs that are running totally parallel. And they're, you know, they're interfacing with each other, okay? We know that our emotions, you know, we can store negative emotions in our muscles. And a lot of sickness comes from a sick mind. I mean, they know these things. This isn't really rocket science. This is how there's so much interfacing between the two programs but this is how you can understand um, that Lebanon is a code word for paradise for the soul the garden of God okay now the garden of Eden was on the earth that will refer to these trees were planted in Eden so here we have high and lofty highly evolved programs so to speak housed in a soulish principality they'll call it this one is Hasatan and it's, this is where you get into it. its roots 
go all the way down into the abyss, we'll find out, into, into the earth, okay? And it's planted in Eden, which is was originally on the earth, okay? And this all has to do with the fall, and there's, a lot, there's so much to this, but let me just try to give you that concept so you can kind of keep tracking here. In Ezekiel 31, 7 through 8, it talks about, so it or he, and the pronoun business here is, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think pronouns are everything because like the Holy Spirit, they translate in the Greek, this is a rabbit trail, I'm sorry, is, is an it. It is the shikana glory of God. It is the female persona of God. People, you just got to get a grip here, all right? You have the father and you have the, the mother. You have, okay, so it's not an it. It's a he. He was greatness. He was beautiful in its greatness. Now, it is in, when you're in the spirit world, male and female, it's not a carnal thing at all, period. So we'll just not even go there. But in the length of its branches, how it's, it, it would talk about its, its influence out there in the cosmos, uh, you know, a spreading tree has a lot of influence out there. Okay, but let me get, its roots extended to many waters. There were four rivers, four waters, had waters in the Garden of Eden. That's another whole thing we're going to unpack. I won't even go there. The cedars in God's garden could not match it, the other cedars. Now, we know we were told he was the anointed cherub. So we now know we got the starry host, our angelic armies, our stars are in the heavens, represent the soul, stars are souls. Uh, the programs that run the souls, so to speak. So here we have here that the, that the cedars in God's garden could not match it. Okay, we're talking about God's garden. We're not talking about Eden right here. The cypresses could not compare with its boughs, which is another word for branches. Um, and the plane tree could not match its branches. No tree in God's garden. Remember, there were many trees in the garden, okay? Could compare with its beauty. No tree in the garden of God could rival it nor could the junipers equal its its branches nor could the plane trees compare with its branches no tree in the garden of god could match in its beauty so here we have the the anointed cherub i mean he really was next to the adamic probably the most sophisticated and highest order created cherub that god had okay ezekiel 31 18 let's keep tracking to which among the trees of eden so he's, he's using trees as an analogy. Are you thus equal in glory and greatness? Yet you will be brought down with the trees of Eden to the earth. You will lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with those who were slain by the sword. So is Pharaoh and all his hordes. See, this is another little key because you'll understand here too. Angels, here's, you know, and this is the thing when the... Um, Watch your angels, if you read the bigger story, the, all the backdrop with all the other books, especially in Enoch, it'll tell you that they petitioned God to leave their habitation. They had a realm they were supposed to operate in. They're supposed to use their influence out there, but from their realm. Well, they wanted to leave it. That's the whole point. They wanted to go down and they wanted to um, walk among the trees in the garden of Eden down here in the earth. And they wanted to exert their influence that way. And God was saying, I don't think you really want to do that. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we, can, we can do it. And, and, you know, God is for not, you know, the whole, you know, the rest is history. But, okay, because they did. They didn't. They were not able to keep their first estate, to stick with. Because of, let me just throw this in there, too, because you got to understand with Genesis, when things are created, and this is another little tip-off to the parabolic language, everything is told to reproduce after its kind, which is the word genus, which is where we get the word species. So everything is made in a species category. All these and cherubims, seraphims, everything, the Adamic, uh, everything is told to, but it, that's not what has always, that is not what has happened. Hybridization has been one of the, these are all the viruses that just God's gonna, it's gonna take care of. All this stuff is going bye-bye. If you don't get your <laughs> rewired, re reprogrammed, if you don't get the new birth, how can I say? You know, okay, so you will lie in the midst of the uncertainty. You will die the death of men is what it's saying. And this is true. I mean, these watch ranges, they're going to die the death of men. They wanted to take on flesh. They wanted to come under the sentence of death. You know, this is, you get what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for. Okay. Now, Zechariah 11, 2. Okay. Now, this whole, when you get into trees, oh my gosh, it's so funny because... <laughs> The poor translators, if you don't really have this 
parabolic understanding, you, you know, you, I, I have a lot of empathy in a lot of ways. How are you going to translate? Because a lot of these words have been translated into so many different trees that sometimes it's very confusing. So, and this is the same thing that has happened, especially with the parabolic language, when you get into the beast, the birds, the fowl, or the beast, the birds, and the remes, the creeping thing. Oh my gosh, you know, that's why we have so much problem with the nakash. And they just translate, he's, he's a snake. No, he's got, he's a scorpion, he's a dragon. A dragon is serpentine. That's a whole race of created beings, okay, which we can understand now. But um, in this verse here in uh, Zechariah 11, 2, now starting at verse 1, it says, Open your doors, O Lebanon, paradise, in that part of the, that realm, that a fire may feed on your cedars, okay, the heights of these cedars, okay, um, wail, O Cyprus, for the cedar has fallen. Uh, because the glorious trees have been destroyed, wail, O Oaks of Bashan, for the impenetrable forest has come down. Now, remember here in, I told you, in Ezra, we started with this verse that said, O Sovereign Lord, from every forest of the earth and from all its trees, thou hast chosen one vine. Now, I hope you can, we'll get there, maybe not tonight, but I'll get, you know, the vine, the chosen vine. You know, we're to be grafted into the vine. I mean, it doesn't contain much rocket science now to understand that the vine, the Lord planted a vineyard. And especially in the Gospel of Thomas, it comes right out and says it. This is that, oh, and this is exactly what is being said in the parable of the sower and the, um, uh, the, the wheat and the tares that um, another vine was planted outside of the Father's will. Okay, so you have the sons of God that were planted by the Father. You have the sons of wickedness planted by believers. I mean, this stuff really all tracks. You just have to take a certain amount of literalness to the parabolic language. It's tautology. One half will equal the other half. So let's find them and put them together. This is how, all right, so anyways, what I did want to tell you some of these words, like the word trees here in uh, uh that a, fir, that a fire may feed on your cedars. Cedars is sometimes translate a pine tree. I mean, so, you know, this is, um, the next word, the oaks of Bashan. Now, this we have to go to really quickly. So, the, the, the cedars of Lebanon, I believe this would be interpreted as the cherubim species of created hosts, angels, that resides in paradise, okay, in, in their lower, because you gotta understand a trunk has roots, and then it has the trunk that's the visible, like it's sort of on the earth plane, then it has its influences, its branches that are in the heavens, see all this type pod you have to follow, but the oaks of Bashan, because you really always have kind of two things, you have the cedars of Lebanon and the oaks of Bashan. The oaks of Bashan is a very, a lot of, almost an easier one to figure out because, uh, it comes right in a lot of places. This, the Oaks of Bashan are the hybrid race that was created by Genesis 6, the Watcher Angels and the Daughters of Men. See, this is the um, Og of Bashan, and it's in, even in the, ge so Mount Hermon, if you know your story, these angels descended onto Mount Hermon, which is in the geographic area of Bashan, okay, which today actually is the Golan Heights, very interesting, and uh, Rothschilds have bought massive acres. I, don't, I remember 7,000 acres in the Golan Heights. I mean, there's just some too many dots here that are connecting. Okay, and so Mart Herman is it. So the Golan Heights, the Oaks of Bashan, Og, was a giant in the Bible who we know was a giant, and he was from called the um, Aga Bashan. And there's another king. These are the kings. These are Canaanite kings. These are all part of the lines of people who cohabitated not only with the Canaanite race, but with the, into the giant race. They all have ites at the end of their name. This is when you get into, there's so much, when you get into the Canaanite line of Cain, uh, Cain Canaan, after Ham and his son, he had all these like six or seven ites, which is all hybrid races that came from him as he kept up this, uh, this, this behavior, okay? Um, and the Amorites, ites, um, who we are told as of this. So I just want, the Oaks of Bashan, um, okay? And then, so 
Let me just give you one other little word usage because you got I work every single word in this stuff. Um, in the New Testament, there's a verse. Oh, I didn't write down where I got it from. Oh, in 2 Corinthians 6.15. Belial, thou, you can have no fellowship. How does it go? An ep, uh, sons of righteous are liar not to have any fellowship with the sons of darkness. Uh, Belial, Belial. Belial is one another, an epithet, another name for Hasatan. Okay? That word means, Belial, it means Lord of the forest. <laughs> Come on, people. I'm not making this stuff up. And desert, because forest and desert are two parabolic. Um, so the forest and the desert, these are two ways of talking about geographics and location and hybridized races of people. Okay, so you have hybridized forest. So this is what we're talking about. Belial, he is the Lord. In, in Hebrew, the word means in Hebrew, so it's transliterated from its Hebrew word, which means worthless. Okay, it, it now worthless and utterly worthless. See, so this whole hybridized seed line, this is the problem. The Lord was, what, what are you doing? I told everything. These are not sanctioned. These are not things that are coming into being under the Lord's will. Okay, so these are worthless. This is what's going to be cut down. This is the whole concept of the trees and everything that's going to be cut down and thrown into the fire at the end of the age. Because it says they're cut down and burned in the fire because they're utterly worthless. Okay, so it all tracks. That's okay. All right. So let's keep going back to um, uh, Zachariah. All right, so we were in Zechariah 11 2. Wail, O oaks of Bashan. For the impenetrable for I mean, they thought they were, this is the whole point in the promised land. This is what Joshua had to come in. And they finally cleaned the area out. The Canaanites. The land was originally given to Shem and his descendants. That, that's what came off the boat. That's, came, that's what came down with the Lord off the boat with Noah and his three sons. They divided up the earth. They were all supposed to get their own piece of the pie and everything was going to be hunky-dory. It never plays out <laughs> like Hashem wants it to. Uh, so they came and they hunkered down in Shem's land. So that, that's the whole story. God had to give it back to them. All right. Now let's go to Isaiah. Here, again, we'll see this language. The prophets totally... See, as I always say, the prophets were never confused. If you understand, kind of begin to get a handle on this stuff, they're always saying the same thing. They're not at all confused. All people groups, there were 70 palms. Oh, this is the whole thing. That, and I'm convinced that now there, there, there's almost a tree for every race, every nation. Okay, whatever. In Isaiah 2, 12 through 13, it says, For the Lord of hosts will have a day of reckoning. A seer against everyone who is proud and lofty and against everyone who is lifted up. Now, who's the first one who lifted him up? We all know this from Ezekiel and everything that, you know, the fallen cherub, uh, you know, he says, I will exalt my throne against the most high. I mean, this is pride is one of major problems, okay, that he may be abased, okay, and it will be against all the cedars of Lebanon that are lofty and lifted up against all the oaks of Bashan, for all the cedars of Lebanon, tall and lofty, and all the oaks of Bashan. See the tautology there. So here he's telling you, everyone who is proud and lofty and lifted up is the same thing as the cedars of Lebanon and the oaks of Bashan that are going to be, um, where does he say, that will be abased. Okay, so in the Pirabach language, a lot of times this is where this, this whole concept of tautology is so uh, exciting because it just explains it right in the verse half the time. See, we don't we know the biggest one, and I can't wait until I get to this, where it explains man and beast. Oh, my gosh. It, it, it's so clear. It's so clear. But we'll get there. So we just did Isaiah. So like I said, the prophets were not confused. I was asked, um, Isaiah was not confused when he was talking to the Oaks of Bashan and the Cedars of Lebanon. Uh, his audience. Okay, nobody was missing his point. Psalm 29.5. Now here, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Okay, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon, which I believe the cedars of Lebanon represents, they are good cedars. See, this guy, Satan, in his trees, in that whole species or, you know, group of created beings, a third fell with Lucifer, and two-thirds have stayed loyal to the Lord. So not every, um, but the Oaks of Bashan is definitely refers to hybridized races. So you have to, you know, you really got to stay on track and keep 
every detail counts. But I will tell you, the cedars of Lebanon, uh, where did I say it? The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. Now, we started in here in Psalm 33. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Again, we have a reference here. The voice of the Lord, the breath of God, breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. Okay? Now, Joel, let's go to Joel 1.12. Now, this is where we get into another types of trees. I haven't really been talking about the cedars of Lebanon and the oaks of Bashan. Uh, and I showed you quickly from Ezekiel, the tree that was in the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, is Satan, okay? And has he infiltrated the Adamic race this way? This is, but I will tell you one other thing. The knowledge of good and evil, what this means is, see, Satan sometimes disguises himself as an angel of light. Sometimes, you know, good, it doesn't matter if you're doing all the best things in the world if you're not doing them by the word of the Lord. If you're not doing this because God asked you to and this is your call and this is your destiny, if you're doing it for your own righteousness or whatever, okay, whatever. So the knowledge of good in, it, in and of itself, like being good, does not save you. <laughs> not at all. Okay, of, of evil. So everything, so sometimes you can, you know, win a person through honey, or sometimes you can just like blow them out with a gun, whatever. I'm saying, so Satan is a master beguiler. He'll use whatever tactic to infiltrate, to bring down, to do whatever his purpose is against God. So, I mean, knowledge of good and evil, what? He wants to use good to entice somebody? I mean, prosperity sometimes can be the biggest cage, the biggest trap in the world. Um, or complete, total carnage and wickedness. Just whatever. He can work both ways. Um, now, all right, so before, let me give you this last verse because we're going to wrap it up because obviously I'm just getting going. This, this is big, but I have to put, because see, a lot of people are unpacking this idea. There's some great people online. I recommend a person, a personal, consider a personal friend of mine, a brother in the Lord. I consider him to be just an absolute um, man of God, uh, stay in the course. This is called the serpent seed doctrine. This is called the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. The, the, okay, that there are two bloodlines. There are the bloodline of Cain's people oppressing the people of God. Um, anyway, Zen Garcia has a YouTube channel called Endeavor Freedom. It's done tons of research on this. And when I was first beginning to see this, you know, and, and I came upon his work and I said, yeah, I'm not crazy. This is really, this is the hidden understanding. And it's time. It's coming out, people. Because, see, the mark of the beast, it's time. If you have any more of the mark of the beast in you by the time the game, the whistle's blown, the game is up, I'm sorry. Get the new birth. It's free. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So let me go to this last one, Joel. One twelve. it says the vine. Okay, remember, now the vine. Vine is a low-spreading tree. Some of them are really high up. The vine, low spread. And I'll get you more of an understanding of the biblical understanding of the vine. Because it, it's from a, a, a root word. See, from an unused root word or one of uncertain origin. I love when they say that. They don't. We've lost so much. But anyways, we will get it back because the Holy Spirit said we would. A vine as twining, especially the grapevine tree. So it's a low spreading twining tree. Uh, dries up and the fig tree fails. Now we know that, and this will tell you, the fig tree represents the house of Judah. And the vine represents, in my opinion, the house of Israel, okay? Because Joseph was called a, a spreading vine, okay? And the fig tree, Jesus cursed the fig tree, the house of Judah. And if you don't understand that one, look at my YouTube. You've got to understand the house of Judah and the house of Israel. And oh my gosh, we've lost so much, but we can get there. Now, and the fig tree fails. The pomegranate, the palm, and the apple tree. All the trees of the field dry up. Indeed, rejoicing dries up from the sons of men. There are other trees. There are trees that have been planted, you know, in the garden that have always stayed loyal to the Lord, okay? So, so here's another one, Song of Solomon 2.3. Like an apple tree, and apple's probably a bad translation here. Among the trees of the forest, the nation groups, so is my beloved among the young men. In his shade, I took great delight and sat down, and his fruit was sweet to my taste, okay? So, I'm going to stop there. We have, <laughs> i got two more pages just of a couple of quick verses about trees because the other thing that we have to cover is, in the agricultural parabolic language, is about thorns and thistles, briars and thistles. 
these things that grow in the garden of God that are going to be burned up and thrown. And this is all agricultural language because um, you're talking about shrubs and grasses. You know, trees are the really big principalities, the big. But then there's a lot of other types of vegetation out there that is representing other things. So we're going we're gonna to have to get into all that. So let's see if there's anything I just want to add onto that. Uh, but all I can say, I'm going to end with this. Pray that your body, your soul, and your spirit be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord because it is soon and very soon. So um, with that, I just want to say good night. God bless you. Um, peace and um, blessings in Yeshua's name.